Well, folks, you know the drill. You know I'm not going to start this show until I see my screen full of hell yes. It's ten taps. Four for the hell, one for the space, four for the yeah, four, another one put a smile on my face. Come on, people. Fill that. I see one. Peter Bix is in the lead. Evan, you and the yeah, you're throwing it in. Come on, guys. That's it. It's filling. It's filling. Come on. You know the drill. Let's fill this screen with hell yes. If you... Heck yes. Heck, Steve. Steve. That's the wrong first four, but we'll go for it. That's better. Right, let's start this thing. Hello, folks of calls. It is I, Lamel. It is I, Letired Mel. Hey, guys, how are you doing? Right. Quick update on Mel. Mel's back is in a much better condition. As you can tell by the gruff look on his face, unshaven, I am still in illness mode. Yeah. Today is the last day of illness mode. The back is, yeah, a lot more mobile, a lot better to be truthful. To be truthful, the only thing that I'm really suffering with now is just pain in my leg. Yeah, any of you who have regular back pain will know that, you know, when the muscle spasm goes off, you have that ache in your legs, that sharp, and it ain't nice. And your leg goes weak at times and stuff like that. And I know, It'll go in a day or two. Yeah, but it hurts. And unfortunately, it's nerve pain, which means ibuprofen and, and paracetamol don't really touch it. Gary's saying, I haven't shaved in six days. Do you know what? Uh, I, I like to shave every day. Do you know what I mean? Saturday, Sundays, it, it sets me up for the day. Oh, wow. I found the twangy one in my leg. That's the one that's the nerves setting off. That's painful. So yeah, watch clip. Normally I shave every day, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, but when I'm ill, I don't shave. And it's a sort of, it's a visual reminder to me to take it easy. Yeah, that no, it's not a normal day. You need to go take it a little bit easier. Andrew saying, I had my first shave in two weeks today. Are you walking fine with it or is it causing you drama getting about? Uh, I'm walking fine and that sort of stuff. I'm mobile. I find, to be truthful, if I sit too long in one position, then I'm a bit stiff getting up, that sort of stuff. And I do occasionally get the odd bout of like, if I cough, yeah, then I'll get a spasm and I'll get leg weakness. But my back is loads better. Yeah, so... The only downside is, as you know, the doctors don't mess around with my back, yeah? And I have diazepam for my back, a muscle relaxant, yeah? Also known as Valium. Now, it's great when you're in pain, yeah? Because it takes the pain and it reduces spasm. When you reach the end of the course and you're not so much in pain, it just knocks you off your feet. I think I've slept 14 hours today, yeah? So I'm kind of glad I'm coming off them now. I've had my last tablet. And I can get back to normal. And I know my leg's going to sort itself out. So. Bruce is saying I do similar with, with not shaving when ill. Tonight I will work. Gary's had a shave obviously. So after last night securely gagging your victim. The panda. So the night's securely tied up with your Oh calm down knots. <laughs> How about when you lay down for sleep? Is it awkward finding the right position? Stone Cloud, I'm a physiotherapist. Don't even try. Yeah. I sleep in a pelvic neutral position with a, a pillar between my knee. I know this stuff. I used to teach it. So yeah, the protective muscle spasm has gone from erector spinae. I did have watchful excessive uh, protective muscle spasm in right side quadratus lumborum. Uh, I also noticed that, what you call it, I was compensating. So obviously I've got the residual, you know, compensating with the, uh, what you call it, uh, scoliosis. Yeah, obviously just a postural scoliosis. 
did find out that I was getting quite a lot of what you call it, intention in piriformis causing uh, pain onto the sciatic nerve result uh, resulting in weakness and paresthesia around what to the front side of quadriceps leading into the the dorsal aspect of, of the patella yeah it's been 20 years but I remember some of the technical stuff <laughs> Oh. I love to grow my beard, but once my moustache gets to my mouth, I get irritated and have a huge urge to at least trim my moustache. I quite like being clean-shaven, to be truthful. I do. Ah, oh, right. So, it's just the leg pain. So, if you see Mel, like, rubbing his hand underneath the desk, it, I, I'm, I'm self-soothing. You want to do for your back is take it easy, stay at home, don't go out unless you have to. I know I am sensible with it. I mean, my back has been a recurring problem for a good eight years. And I get bouts of it about two or three times a year. And typically it'll take me off my, off my, if I, if I don't have meds, it'll take me out for what you call it, for a month at least I'll be in agony and a cripple if they have meds then realistically I'm looking at three four days yeah Mel just as well you weren't a pioneer sergeant then pioneers are the only ones who can have them pioneers don't even exist anymore they disbanded them for anyone who's never had a bad back get it if in bed need a cough roll onto one side there's nothing worse than knowing you've got a cough coming, yeah, when you've got a bad back. Because you know what it's going to do to you, yeah, and you know there's nothing you can do to stop it. And you just have to, be like, this is going to hurt. I mean, getting up, you don't mind, you know, when you're stiff and that sort of stuff. Because, you know, you get yourself up slowly, start moving, and yeah, it aches and it hurts, but... A cough is like someone smacking your back with a hammer. It's horrible. Ah. Oh. Yeah, I think I'll stick with proper meds, Malatine. <laughs> Won't see you at Barrage this year, bud. I don't think there'll be a Barrage this year. A sneeze is worse. Oh, yeah. 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 Cough, sneezes. They're a git. Uh, right. Barrage. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, let's do a quick PAMI update. Yeah, because not much has happened. But, you know, we have the drill. It's PAMI, the protected panic pandemic, pandemic panda. Yeah. Okay, guys. Yeah. In the world of craziness that's going on outside, what's going on in the world? Well, not much. We're still in ground dog, aren't we? Uh, I've seen a couple of things. I've seen that uh, France, Spain, and Italy have declared their lockdowns till mid May. Yeah, and they've officially made it, yeah, to, till mid May, which is okay. You know what I mean? It was what I was sort of expecting, looking at the graphs and where things are, and you know what what our lot, you lot of guys have been saying. Yeah, we're a couple of weeks behind. Yeah. Uh, so realistically, if we follow the same curve and you know we we carry on doing what we're supposed to be doing, yeah. Uh, then, then I reckon out for end of May. Now, this just raised. Someone needs to 3D print a PAMI with twin bolt pistols. Yeah. Right. Uh, now, this raises an issue. Yeah, because it does not look like I will be out of isolation. Yeah. Uh, oh, the, uh, Alpha's saying barrage is cancelled. Yeah, I thought it would be. And I think it's, we're just going to have to accept that it's going to have to be like that for a little while while we sort this out. Uh but we're two weeks behind, so I'm expecting out for end of May, start of June. 
Now, first off, we need to acknowledge the fact that out of lockdown does not mean, yeah, social distancing rules aren't going to apply. Yeah, they're not going to say, right, we're out of lockdown, everything back to normal. No, no, it's going to be a slow, progressive. In the UK, they're banded about the idea of perhaps letting younger people, uh, sort of 20s and 30 year olds to, to go out first, to be unlocked first. Git. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, one of the things is, it's going for my birthday and I'm going to be in lockdown on my birthday. So, if I am in lockdown on my birthday, we will be having a special long, long stream. Yeah. Uh, and it will be a birthday party for me. Yeah. Uh, on the family side, we have been pro we have been practicing social distancing rules and we have been complying with you know government regulations because children can come see their pair other parents you know if they live in separate households you technically counted uh biologically you counted as one household if the kids tr travel in between you know what i mean hey jace uh so yeah you technically counted as one household so uh, I've had visits off the kids, you know, Kez has come over for a coffee, yeah, me in the kitchen, yeah, her and the kids in the living room, talking through the door while I sat on the floor, but it was good. Same time, Willow came over for a couple of hours while Kez was doing some stuff. At the moment, Kerry is running around uh, collecting materials and helping. Basically, Kerry's mum is a seamstress, yeah. Uh, she's got loads of friends who are seamstress. Yeah, the local hospitals need scrubs. So Kerry's running around gathering supplies off people on free cycle and that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm probably going to be doing a shout out in upcoming shows for get you guys to help her find materials and stuff like that. But I haven't sorted. To be truthful with the meds, my, ha my head hasn't really been in the right place. I've been dopey as hell. Yeah, so it's on the job list. I want to sort that. And we're going to help Kerry to do, because at the minute, she's running around and what you call it. Uh, I'll tell you what we can do. What can we do? Let me figure it out. Yeah, but we're going to give her a hand. I just need to figure out how what the best way to do it is. Yeah, but massive shouts out to Kez. Yeah, for, for being an absolute trooper. But while she was running around, uh, Willow wanted to come see her dad. Willow came to see a dad and it wasn't a dad that she wanted to see. It was her dad's large screen set up with a really powerful computer so she could kick Corbin's backside on Fortnite. Yeah, which to be perfectly honest, yeah, I didn't mind at all because the sun was shining. I opened the front door. Yeah, I sat in the front door. Yeah, while she was uh, playing on here and, you know, we just bantered and that sort of stuff. So. It was really good for me, really good. Did share the Dunelm request. Yeah, I'm waiting for him to get back to me. Fingers crossed. Right, only saying Finland, same here. We might even fare this without overloading our systems if most opti optimistic predictions pan out. New news is that there's been idiots in our preparedness administration. Right, well, that's no new news, is it? I did see something about uh, our Nightingale hospitals, the one, the, the 2000 bed one in what you call it, in the Excel centres only had 19 patients. But there was a little comment which was, yeah, uh, the Nightingale hospitals aren't what you call it, accepting the frail or infirm. Yeah, which is sort of suggesting, right, if you don't think there's a chance that this person is going to pull through, don't send them to a nightingale. So the nightingales are clearly designed to, what you call it, to essentially recover people with people who have a definite chance of recovery, which it's battlefield triage. I understand it as a medic, yeah. Hearing battlefield triage being applied, you know, in my own country, that's hard. That's hard to hear. When I when I heard it in Italy, you know, it was like, damn, yeah. 
where you start, you know, and I knew the implications of what battlefield triage means. Yeah. Battlefield triage is basically you save the ones you have the best chance of saving. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Yeah, and you don't expend resources on people that you, you know, don't have a chance or have very minimal chances. Yeah, it's about doing the best with what you've got. And it's a horrible thing. Um, battlefield triage only kicks in when it was a phrase that goes back to the old Cold War medicine. Yeah, when we were expecting mass casualties and mass battlefields and, you know, we were using, I mean, for example, uh, the British army round is 7.62 or was, and it was designed to end someone. Yeah, uh, the NATO current round is 5.56 and that's designed to wound someone. Yeah, the reason being is it's more demoralizing, it puts pressure on the enemy's logistics. Yeah, and all these sort of extra little factors. Yeah, as well as weight of ammunition and all that sort of stuff. But, yeah, uh, the, the, the army medical services were geared for coping with mass casualties and what to do when there were too many casualties. And that's battlefield triage. To hear, to read that statement about, you know, not sending the, the infirm or, or the frail or the infirm to the nightingales was right. Battlefield triage is in effect. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's hard mentally. You know what I mean? Because as a medic, yeah, that's not something I ever wanted to hear in my own home country. Yeah, but it is where the nightingales don't have the specialist ICU staff. So they'll only be able to treat less serious cases or those who are recovering. I'd argue the case on that one, Tam, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, because I've seen British forces, or British forces news are showing, what you call it, uh, army medics getting trained up to use ventilators and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so, and anyway, let, let's not argue the point on that, yeah? Governor of New York said today that figures show that uh, in New York, 80% of the persons put on ventilators will not survive. Yeah, I have seen that. I've seen in the UK, uh, it's 50-50, I've seen. Now, uh, I don't want to start a little bit of a, a, a spat between, what do you call it, uh, 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 the, our closest friendships was UK and the US, but to be perfectly honest, yeah, after visiting the US, if you consider that the risk factors with COVID are obesity, high blood pressure, yeah, I can understand why the people who struggle in the US may have less of a chance when put on a ventilator, yeah, because you guys, you guys really like to eat your fatty food. I mean, you see it like a competition. Yeah, when I went to Adepticon, I had to eat children's meals. I ate an adult meal once. I only made it, I think, a third of the way through it. Yeah. What's that pancake place? You've got a pancake place. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, but I went there with for pancakes. Yeah, and I was expecting pancake. You know, a couple of raw pancakes, bit of sugar on. Yeah, yeah, these are great. What I got was a 10 inch cylindrical, yeah, uh, cooked batter mix, cooked in layers with my daily recommended intake of calories smeared in syrup between each layer. So I was looking at approximately a week's worth of calories. I mean, literally, I was having to eat it like a cake. I'll take it, I'll, I'll have a slice. <laughs> Waffle House, that's it. <laughs> uh. 
A combination of the food types and lack of healthcare underlying medical problems. Yeah, there is a lot. And, you know, uh, I think that's why mortality will change in, in different areas. I mean, to be perfectly honest, it's one of my saving graces. I is skinny as hell. I mean, my blood pressure my blood pressure is well below the norm and my heart rate is good and so even though i have a bad chest yeah uh my risks are actually quite low overall international house of pancakes i thought you were going to say i had to eat children no i'll be honest with you uh adepticon I think the highlight of my my eating at Adepticon, and I ate well at Adepticon and all over the stuff, but the very best thing I had at Adepticon was the porridge oats that Kat sent me in a watch call it in a like a food parcel, because they didn't involve fat. For the first time, yeah, in about I think I was about four or five days in, and it was just carbs. It was like, as a Brit, don't get me wrong, yeah, uh, what's it called, don't get me wrong, I mean, we like our fatty food as well, yeah, but it, the, the difference between, you know, how much fatty food and how much of it you eat in the, in the US and how much we eat in the UK, it, it's significant. You would have loved this year's care package. I will love next year's care package, I'm sure, Cat. Italy, my girlfriend's grandma, 92, has been sent home from hospital with a, with a cough, no testing. If you're not with a fever, she got hospitalised before a fall with the broken bones. Do you think Trump could survive if he caught COVID? Uh, from all understanding, he eats like a 12 year old with parents that don't care i have seen what you call it with regards to uh president trump's diet i have seen comments that you know he does live on fast food and that sort of stuff and clearly he's a large and obese and you know i mean i don't know his medical history i mean apparently to according to it to the surgeon general yeah he's fit enough to be an astronaut but i think but as a met as a medical assessment from a physiotherapy point of view and knowing the risks i think he would he 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 would be in an uh, in an at risk group i would have thought dan's lost two and a half stone in weight but well on the mend yeah let's let's keep the politics out of the chat i mean yeah, congratulations, Dan. I mean, uh, the irony is I'm trying to do my best to put on weight because I lost a lot with the chest infection, you know, in January and that sort of stuff. And you saw how that took me off my feet. But I really did lose a lot of weight, to be truthful. And I've never, I've never been one of those big, big blokes. You know, I've always been an athletic build at best. Yeah, and so, you know, I'm very conscious of, I'm loading up at the minute. I find Brit food very greasy. Almost every meal used to make me have a greasy couch afterwards when I lived there. <coughs> yeah, it can be. Put on weight, eat American food, Mel. No, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not hitting the saturated fats. You know what I mean. Yeah, I want protein, you know, I want good selection of carbs get me through the day, but it's protein I really need. I need to build muscle mass. Uh, no offence, but UK food has a lot of grease and salt compared to Italian ones. Uh, yeah, very, very true. Very true. Uh, the salted thing, I think, goes back to the preserving meat. Uh I mean, I do like Italian food, to be perfectly honest. I do like making my own lasagnas. Yeah. Uh, I do like pastas and stuff like that. I like spaghetti bolognese, but it's kind of ironic. I like the bolognese more than I like the spaghetti. MREs sound good right now. 
We haven't got that far, mate. We haven't got that far. Uh, 35% of we Americans are not only overweight, but obese. At least we quit smoking cigarettes. To be perfectly honest, yeah, in Stoke-on-Trent, where I live, it's it's after the northeast of the UK, Stoke is the highest obesity place in the country. Two-thirds of, uh, uh, of Stoke's population is obese, yeah, and we have a lot of morbidly obese people who are at risk, high risk. Yeah, so. I'm not sure it's the type of food so much as the amount of it. We do overfill plates. You do, and it's very off-putting to be perfectly honest. Spaghetti bolognese are not an Italian food. Well, listen, in, in Britain, yeah, it's been labelled an Italian food, mate. <laughs> You've been misrepresented, dude. I've been eating a lot of rices and stuff lately, to be truthful. Yeah, I, I've been finding what I've been doing is buying those big packs of, like, uh, curry chicken chunks just stir frying up some rice and just you know a bit of an Indian selection and it gets me through listen we're gonna have to stop talking about food because I'm getting really hungry really hungry oh now people are talking about shepherd's pie that's morally wrong that's one of my most favourite meals, and I haven't had one in eight. You're a git. You're an absolute git. Spaghetti is Italian. So is bolognese sauce. Putting them together is not Italian. Yeah, but it's what? Listen, you're, you're forgetting. Us Brits, we have curry and chips. It's about a fusion, mate. It's about a fusion of elements to create something new. I always found the plates to be very large and overfilled on my trips to the US. No wonder there are so many man versus food type shows that actually popularize eating huge amounts of food. It's scary. Yeah, I did. I did. Calorie dense and nutrient poor is the American way. Pineapple goes in fruit salad, nowhere else. Right, let's do it, okay? Are you a, a, a pineapple on pizza sort of person or should pineapple not go on pizza? I like pineapple on pizza. I, I'll say that again. I like pineapple on pizza. Go on, chat. All right, here we go with it. It's forget politics. We're going to cause it. There's no one with this one. Jay says he likes pineapple on pizza. Hawaiian for the win. Not on pizza. Pineapple on pizza. Heresy. Pineapple and Canadian bacon. Stop. Just stop. Pizza. Death of bread due to. Pineapple belongs on pizza. Brazil here. Hello. That's fine. But do you have pineapple on your pizza, mate? Many people have chips, cheese and gravy. That's lovely, that is. I quite like chips, cheese and gravy. Pineapple on rum. That's a new one. I'm pro pineapple. Right. I think we're finding a trend with us Terraniacs. We're a bit weird. The last time I got groceries, the cashier said all the frozen pizzas had sold out, except for the ones with pineapple. Where's the unsubscribe button? <laughs> That's the comment. That's brilliant. Okay, Odin's saying, I'm from Finland. Pineapple pizza is normal. 
We put bananas, kebab, etc. Bananas on pizza? You put bananas on pizza? As in, bananas? Banana. No, I think, listen, the pizza conversation needs to change. We need to discuss this banana on pizzas thing. Yeah, okay, the pineapple thing, yeah, we know that's common knowledge and it goes, yeah. We need to know about this, but Odin, we need to know about this. Do you cook them with? Do you slice them? What do you do? Yeah, not very common. Bananas, canned peaches. What? Canned peaches on pizza. Eggs on pizza and Mexican. Sliced bananas on. This is a revelation. I mean, genuinely. Bananas and curry is good. What? If you use the broiler on the bananas on the pizza, that'd be quite good. Cat say, we need to put glue on foam. Please, please. <laughs> I've just had my mind open to a, a hundred and one new possibilities for pizza. I don't even really like pizza. It's not my favourite food. I just see it as posh cheese on toast. Oh, cheese on toast. I've got no cheese. Buffalo wings. Right, Mel, everyone's saying, Mel, get some foam out and crack on. I think that's a wise idea, people. Right. Different colour foam. Yeah, going to have to move my keyboard. Now, just to remind you what we were doing yesterday. Yeah, I uh, remember Mel will be a little bit slow and dopey on this because Mel is on his meds. Yeah, so we'll take it easy, but I want to show you the sort of stuff that we're doing. Right. We started, yeah, to temporarily mount, yeah, our, what shall I, our scenic pieces. Scenic pieces, isn't that posh? Yeah, uh, this is so good. Now, they are going to be coming back off these and being broken off, yeah, for painting because certain elements, these aren't too bad, yeah, but there'll be certain elements which are just way too complicated to paint on base. But what this allows us to do is to start to gribble it up, to start getting an idea of where we want things, mark things out. Yeah. Mel is drooling a little. Yeah, we need to stop talking about food. We really need to stop talking about food. Cabbage salad. Oh yeah, yeah. I like coleslaw. So, obviously we've got that, we, we put that scenic piece together la uh, last night. Oh. Yeah, and we also put that one together. Yeah, now obviously what's great is that the PVA is strong enough, yeah, to hold everything together. I don't want to push it too heavy. I think if I hold that, we might get if we hold that, we will get a breakage. Yeah, but it does give me an opportunity. Now, if you very quickly look at the base, yeah, do you see the blobs of PVA? Yeah, foam hasn't come away. They're actually little guides. They've glued in the shape of where I need them. So, watch this. Ba, 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 ba. Who else saw that coming? It's almost like I planned it on purpose. I didn't. Yeah. Right. All I'm going to do is exactly where the PVA is. Yeah. Once the PVA comes out. Yeah. 
yeah is I'm just going to put the PVA just by where the ridge lines on the watch call it on the other PVA drops are just a little just a little bit where's the ridge there there okay so if I bring it back up just very quickly yeah you'll see I've literally just put the PVA just where the other bits of PVA were now this is going to be a bit jengery yeah because I've got to slide this in here like that rotate that round I don't want to touch the PVA just yet. I want to sort of guide it into position. Yeah. But. Stick that there, that there, that there. And then. Right, we'll go camera two. I don't even, I don't, I think I forgot to watch color, color balance. Not that one. Not that one. That one. Oh, that's not a bad color balance. So as you can see. Yeah, because I put the PVA exactly where it was, yeah, they're actually held in place and guided in place by the previous set PVA. So, Mel's a happy chappy. Let's put that one back over there to dry. Right, next off, we need to do another hard standing. Now, I've uh, got a different bit of phone. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to drive on the meds that I'm currently on. Yeah, uh, it's a big no-no. And to be truthful, that's probably a good thing with not being able... I'm a little bit dopey, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, a little bit slower than normally. I'm a little bit... I've been a lot tired lately. But also, I've got a lot of weakness, yeah, in my right leg. And so, my concern is that... Oh. Leg's killing me. My concern is that what you call it, that that's my brake pedal leg. Oh. The all my muscles all the way up my leg are, are twanging like they're like they're bowstrings. The other leg is fine. It's the last stages. But we soldier on, we soldier on. We do what we can do. Right. Ayy. Oh. Oh, you get. Right, I want to mount this. So, next one. Yeah, let's, let's get a bit of a better angle for you. There you go. Okay, this is one of our reactor pieces, wasn't it, that we were working on? Now, though, we still have Floaty McFloaty. In fact, I think we could probably cure that with a bit of 5mm foam, I think. Do we do it now? No, we'll do it when we get to the painting stage because we've got to break these off. So, yeah. Now, if I bring it round here, what we're basically doing is we're shuffling and we're, we're basically taking chunks out of this foam and we just need to make sure that our chunk is big enough to actually mount the piece. So, push those over to there. Got a reasonable hard standing around there. We've got this platform here. Yeah, so I want to pull that back a bit. Yeah. So now I don't I don't have to worry about overhangs too much because I can trim them back. I mean, obviously, I want to be a little bit economic with the foam. Yeah, but it is better to have. Better to have too much foam and cut it back than not enough foam, if you know what I mean. 
Uh, Dan saying, did I look at the emails I sent Ari, the pipelines? In all honesty, Dan, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, like I say, I got up today. Uh, I potted around. I had my meds. And then within an hour, I just felt like I had to go back to bed and I crashed. And in all honesty, if when I, before I went back, what you call it, I messaged Jace to say, look, if I don't message you by eight o'clock, ring me mate yeah because i knew watch how tired i was and he woke me up if he hadn't if i hadn't have done that yeah i would have slept through this live stream so right we need one of those and we need yellow put yellow blade where's yellow blade I'm gonna put my back's all right. I'm gonna put my hot water bottle on my bloody leg. Oh. Right. Has anyone noticed when he leans in and the camera catches the top of his head, all the colours change? Do they? I imagine it's auto-correcting the white balance or something like that. Right. So, first off. Le cuts. Yeah. I'll trust it and and, and believe this that this uh, edge is true for cutting. Right. Yeah. All I'm doing is just scoring a line. Yeah, so got a line in it. Uh, when I spin it round, you'll be able to see the line a little bit better. Obviously, big sheet, hard to work with. Yeah, once we cut it down, it'll be easier. Yeah, so you stay there. Yeah, there's plenty of room that way. Yeah, and then all we need to do is make sure that this side. Yeah, is lined up nice. That should do us for that piece. Right. You go sit with Pammy and we can do some cutting. Looks like YouTube comments have stopped. It would appear that way. Let me pop out my watch clip, my chat. And it is about 40 minutes in. Let's see how, keep an eye on the time, guys, and let's see how long it takes to reconnect, just so we can keep an eye on this, and then I'll be able to reach back out to, what you call it, uh, to the guys at Restream, and sort of say, right, me and my community have noticed this. What are your thoughts? Did he just reach for the banana instead of the knife? Oh, shut up, cat. Keyboard. Right, so let's put cut in here. This is where everyone starts panicking in the chat. 
Should he be cutting? I don't think this is a good idea. How are the angles? How's it looking? I mean, I know we're waiting for our, our latest webcam. Just for future streams, you know what I mean? I'm just thinking along the lines of, right. What else can we do? You know what I mean? Because I do want to do more of these builds, but I want to do them longer and that sort of stuff. But that's when we get back to the studio. I've got to, there's a lot I've got to figure out, if you know what I mean. But knowing that the tech's working... Right. Lightweight, looks okay. No, he hasn't had a chance yet as the meds have zonked him out today. <laughs> it stopped, what do you call it? Uh, bang on 40 minutes in. Right, let's see how long it takes for it to come back on. Right. So, this is where I go. Why doesn't it fit? There you go. It does fit. Thank God. Yeah, and we'll go like that. So, I'm not going to be able to fix this platform down. It's got a bit too much of a spring in it. So, I'm going to have to wait until we're ready, ready to actually properly fix that down. Yeah, but... Yeah, and we do have Floaty McFloaty, the reactor. But I've got ideas on how we can deal with that. Yeah, let's line it up. Make sure we're happy with how it sits. Yeah, and... Get some PVA, and once again, I'm just put, going to put it in a few cr crucial places so that when I pop it off the base, yeah, to paint and do things with it, yeah, I can put it back on and use the PVA as a guide. So that's why I'm not putting it underneath the piece and sticking it down, that's why I'm putting it around the edge. really get into there to fix that so I'm going to leave it yeah we will fix this though come on ah oh, don't wiggle wiggle it Will you lot stop to... Oh. 
Right, I'm going to glue this. I'm going to get up, move my leg a bit. I think part of the problem is being in isolation, guys. And actually having to stay, you know what I mean? Having to stay in one place. You know what I mean? And not being able to go out, drive, move around, all that sort of stuff. I mean, obviously, it doesn't help that, you know, I was recovering from the chest issue. But, put a bit of glue there. Yeah, so, that's in place. And then, very strategically, just put a bit there, just to hold that. Really, I need a syringe, long nose syringe, so I can get in between things. But I'm working from home at the end of the day. Yeah, but there we have it. So, that one yeah is up and running it is functional enough i reckon yeah obviously the base will be trimmed and that sort of stuff we've got things to add to it get okay. you need to fit nicely with that you so we need to put this one up somewhere where we it can dry Yeah, isolation could drive a person nuts. I'm seeing it driving people nuts, to be truthful. Yeah, I've seen the Facebook games go round with everyone like, oh, what's this list? Oh, what? If, if, if someone had four sons, you know, uh, and I've started to see the little challenges going around now. Now, currently going around my uh, Facebook group is the Neck a Pint Challenge. Yeah. I don't see how that's a challenge. It's just neck in a pint. But that's going round. I'm also seeing people starting to do lots of silly little videos. And I was reading an article which says... Yeah, that's a sign of people, you know, going mad. Now, I've been doing lots of silly little videos on the internet for years, but, you know, I am mad. You know, doctors have said so. <laughs> yeah, but I'm watching all the sensible people and all the respectable people starting. And we're what? We're two weeks into April. In the UK, we've got another six weeks go. They're only into their fourth week. We're not even halfway through lockdown yet. And people are going nuts. Yeah, it, it's quite entertaining to watch, to be truthful. Ah. Oh. I don't get to be isolated, job is considered essential, so I have to deal with idiots that don't need to be out, but nonetheless, James, ah, thank you. I can understand that, I, I can read into that absolutely everything. Hmm. We've got a few, of my, a few of my Facebook friends are very similar. Oh. Right, so put that one down there. Just let the glue set. Right. Mel is... Mel's okay. Mel wants to do a bit more work. Yeah, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to get myself a brew and I need to get up and walk around. So I'm going to have a... I'm going to have a quick... What you call it? Uh, two minutes. Well, it's probably going to be about three minutes. Give me three minutes, guys. Yeah, just to refresh the brew. What you call it? Uh... Stretch this leg off. Yeah. And then we're going to come back and we're going to assemble another sub assemblies. Yeah. And we're going to be, we're going to mount it. Calm down. Right. Came back at, what you call it? Uh, 52 minutes. Uh, so, so we lose, what you call it? We, we lose the, the YouTube chat through Restream for 12 minutes, 
40 minutes into the show. Let's keep an eye on that, guys. Let's see if it stops again. Yeah, basically, if I can write this down, I can get the timings and I can I can feed it back to Restream. They can narrow it down and say, all right, Mel, it's this setting you haven't set right. Or they can say, right, OK, that's a glitch with our system. We'll look into it. Leave Pammy in charge if you're AFK. <laughs> right guys I'll leave you in the capable hands of Pammy yeah the pandemic yeah I did you watch that just float down then <laughs> Right, I'm going to mute the mic, obviously, and I'll see you in just a second. If anyone comes in and wonders what's going on, just let them know what we're doing. See you in a sec.
Hello, folks. Ah, oh, right. <sighs> Bit better? One quick check of the phone, because I haven't even checked if we had any PayPals. We haven't. That's cool. Don't worry about it. I am happy with that. Oh, right. Let's build. So we've just put together one other piece. Yeah, now I want to have a look at what else we can do. I want to put together a small piece. And I've got a few small elements that I can do use to do it. Yeah, I just need to make absolutely sure that I'm not using things that I shouldn't be using that are allocated to other projects. No, I'm not. Those are all allocated to the same build. So, oh. So, what have we got? Well, we got these. Yeah. Now, simple reactor, another simple reactor. Want to do something a bit different with it. So, don't really want to connect the bottom bits, but we can connect the top bits. So, we could do something like that. Yeah, which I like. I like that, actually. I like that a lot, actually. So we can definitely do something like that. Next thing is obviously we like pipes and that sort of stuff. We could put a venting pipe there. Or what we can do is, yeah, we could swap these round like that, which makes it slightly more interesting. Uh, let me bring you down to that. Okay, now I'm running out of large elements, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, so I just want to come up with a small piece for these two that works. Yeah. Everything else has been allocated. And so I just want to use just a couple of bits. Now I don't have any other feature bits, so... We could do something like that. Which is an interesting arrangement. Yeah, and have an angled pipe. So, like that. Although right now, what I am really thinking is this idea of, yeah, using one of these pipes across like that. Because it'll give me a decent sized base. Remember, we're gonna build platforms and stuff over it. So, let's go with that as a starter. Yeah, now when we look at these pipes, they've got outlets on them. Yeah, so we can use those. So what I need to do is find a different one. Come on, what have we got? Come on, let's go. Mm. Right, let's have a look through my pipes. Got that one, another one, that one's got a one in the middle. That's perfect. Yeah, so why is this perfect bow skull? Well, let me explain. Yeah, uh, found this one. Now this has got, watch you call it, this has got a venting system just on one place. Yeah, which means, yeah, that if I put these between each other, yeah, I can still be, build a gantry over the here and still have some sort of venting system up here. Now, the vents typically go that way, so that's gonna cut in. So if we switch it round that way, yeah, that can go there without clashing and crashing again. Right, I need to make double check this. So if that was to be fixed to there and goes to there, yeah, that'll go there, it'll make it interesting. Do you know what? I'm going to bring this camera for the next show round to this position. So you sort of see what I see. Mel, you can use the reactor horizontal like it's stocking on the side. Uh, I'm 
Nah. Yeah, I could use the watch call at the exit ports here, but I don't want to. Yeah, so first thing I do want to do is I like what I, the idea of connecting that one to there and then connecting it, yeah, to there. Basically, what we're going to do, oh, nice one, thank you. Hey, man, glad to see you doing better. Finish my board, working out the Hive City next. I'm slowly building up these terrain pieces because I want to have a kill team campaign. Listen guys, you're just gonna have to go with the, the occasional pain and that sort of stuff. There's nothing I can do about it, in all honesty. I've just gotta pair with it. Right, so uh, mine's gonna be for my kill team campaign. So I'm doing the industrial sectors first. I wanna have a high sector. I'll check them out, Rich. Fred. Oh, right. So, first things first, we're going to build on the fly on this one. There is going to be some wiggling. Right. There we go. So, I want that pipe there. So, I wiggle it this way. Wiggle it that way. Just give it a general wiggle. All I'm doing there is getting the glue. Yeah, because the, the glue basically bonds and melts the plastic by rubbing it and making it a little bit sticky and tacky, you just get a better join. Yeah, and straight away, that won't take long to bond because we haven't put too much glue on it. Yeah, so what we do have to do is make damn bloody sure that it's, that bit is level. Yeah, right. Next bit. Let's step it up. So, obviously, we've got the top of here we need to do something with. Now, what other... We could fix that onto there. That's a bit excessive. We could fix that onto the now. We could fix that onto there. No. Wait. Slow down, Padwan. Right. Next job. Let's get the vent system on it. So I need... I've got one of these. Yeah. Uh, but it needs a special mount. So I need to find a special mount. So that's the mount. Yeah. And this is just creating a, a you know a simple scatter piece that we can throw down on the table. Yeah, it's not one of our feature pieces, it's not one of our medium pieces, this is one of our small size pieces, but it still needs to be functional, so it needs to block some line of sight, needs to give some elevation, some cover. See you later, Dan. So, next job, throw this into here. And I'm trying to add a bit of quirkiness to it, in all honesty. Now, now what? 
where to go from here. Right. Uh, we need a we need a bit of elevation on this. So. So, I've uh, got that one. We need... Where are my pipes? Out there. Hmm. That could be quite quick. Yeah, I quite like that, combining those pieces. Right, does it does this piece sit in here properly? Or is it are we gonna to have to modify it? I think we're gonna to have to modify that. But I do like the idea of mounting that on top of that, which will give us an over a much better overall height and bring it in line with the other ones, even though it's yeah, we're doing that. So first things first, yeah, let's clip this down. This is how I assemble my buildings. Yeah, I, I come up with the concepts. First the industrial idea. Yeah, then I figure out how I can make it functional. Are you just using leftovers or are you using a kit? I'm using leftovers. All my major elements have been allocated to other builds that we're slowly putting together and we will do over this week. You know, we'll get them all mounted on, on our foam and that sort of stuff so you can see what they start to look like. Yeah. Right, Knotts is making notes. Thanks, thanks for that. So there seems to be some sort of glitch, definitely with Restream, because it's affecting the visual. Right, so. Yeah, all I've done is clipped off the little, the raised bits, yeah? Uh, that will allow me to Slide that and fix that onto there. Hmm. Yeah, so we'll fix that onto there perfectly. Yeah, so first we build the industrial components. Once we've got the industrial components glued on and fixed up and we know what we're doing with those, then we can move ahead and start putting the sort of the rigging on and the, the gantries and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, we need to declip those off. Yeah. So have a look at how that sits with that. It's sitting just on a very tiny rim. So we can do this. I just have to be, in fact, I'm going to mount this on top of this first. Actually, if we turn it upside down, we get a much better fit or more surface to glue to. So we'll do it that way, which means we need to fix this one to here. Right, so uh, we might as well put the glue onto this bit where the, the rim's thinner.
yeah uh i want the dials and everything yeah to be on one particular side and that's important for the functionality side of this because that what's the point in having a gangplank not a gangplank a, a gantry if it's if it's not accessing something important now i will be jumping on the amazon after this yeah uh the battle plan is quite simple yeah i'm going to be buying a load of guitar wire <laughs> yeah bass guitar wire so that can go there that's good so that gives the a really nice high even though it's only two elements and it's it's different to everything else that's on the set so it's not just oh it's those bits it's like oh that's different, and that's different, and that's different. And that's the way I like it. Uh, 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 uh. So we put that on there. Because we can have a gantry and then a ladder going up to here, or maybe another platform. Uh, Nighty night? Hell yeah in advance? Oh yes? So yeah, I'm quite happy with how that's panned out. Yeah? So, what else have we got to let... What else have we got to do? Well, we've got a bit of an iffy join there, but that's all right. We've got two exit ports there that we need to deal with. Yeah, so that one and that one. Yeah, we've got another exit port here. Now, what I don't want to do is extend it any longer, but we do have that. Now, that could be used in some way. Yeah, to bring that to there. We could do that, but I don't like how that's rocking to be truthful, so let's skip that idea. Now that could go into there. Yeah, we could put a vent off system there. What I'm thinking is I want to get one of those reactors in. Reactors, reactors, where for art thou reactors? Come on, I haven't used them all, surely. That's one did we. Have I used all my reactors, really? Nah. Surely not. Surely not. I may have. I may have. How bizarre. I wasn't expecting that. Have we going any of that? No, we haven't. Well, that stumped me. I honestly thought we had more reactors than that. Okay, we're going to have to cut this off here. No, I can't break it. Can't snap it, so we're going to have to cut it. go you know you never need to have to cut these things all the way through you just need to break the initial bond and then you can get what you call it underdog. oh underdog sorry to hear that mate
We've all got a few people who are close to us and we're all worried and uh, I'm sorry to hear that, mate. Right, I'm just cleaning up the join so we get a nice a nice join. Yeah. So got this bit. What I'm thinking is since we've already got the heavy industry sort of stuff here. Yeah, we can do put that to there. Surprise that doesn't join better, to be truthful. Yeah, and then take it to the reactor, which would put that about there. That could work. Uh, what else have we got? That goes there. Put the reactor to there. Uh, one second, let me have a look at my parts. This is the figuring out bit. I mean, we could just keep it simple. Because you know I like simple. Because I am. We could just glue that one to there, glue that into the reactor. So if we were to put that one to there, that will come into here. We could do something like that. No, it's going to leave it under the gantry. So let's leave it there. Yeah, so. Uh, I want that one in there no matter what because that will close that down quite neatly and pull the base in. Yeah, uh, so let's do that very quickly. Mm, throw that in there. Give it a wiggle. Because wiggling it always makes it better. Yeah, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this one around here and I'm just going to put another connector, the one that we cut off, yeah, there, which will work perfectly. Yeah, so let's just do that very quickly. So one of them goes like that. Yeah. Right. Mel, are you going to leave some pipe openings to connect to major pe other pieces within loose scatter pipes? No, what you call it? I know what you're thinking, and I completely agree. Yeah, leave some pipes open, and then you can connect them with other pipes and make it look like it's all connected. I'm having that connected look, but I'm going about it in a much different way. Yeah, and only once I bring the set together will it be apparent how I'm doing that, okay? So guys, you're just gonna have to, you know what I mean? Just gonna have to trust me on that one. Right, I want this nice and tight. Yeah, so I could have it like that, which would make it stick out a bit further. Yeah, but I'm turning it around like that. So it's tighter in, but goes further along here, which works for me. Very quickly, that lines up fine. So yeah, let's throw some sticky, mix sticky on here. Do you know I've made myself a coffee? I mean, drank it. I think I just wanted to get up and move my leg. <laughs> And then that should, that's not lined up properly. 
yeah that should go there perfectly so straight away I've got some interesting industrial components now we have another vent somewhere on this there and I think I'm just going to cap that one off I don't want to extend this base any further this way and so if I start adding pipe work and that sort of stuff it's just going to get messy yeah so we need to pipe that off uh, we need to cap it off and the GW stuff comes with all sorts of interesting caps to be perfectly honest yeah so there you are there's a nice Mechanicum skull one yeah so we'll throw that one in there Yeah, put that in there. Just double check, make sure the skull's straight. Doesn't really matter if it's a fan or something like that, but you don't want a wonky skull, do you? When you finish, I would like to see you and Cord play a game. Yes, yeah, so when we finish it, and even before it's finished, when we're play testing it, yeah, we will watch call it. I can see, I don't want to glue this on just yet because I think it's just going to make it a little bit more complicated for painting. So, uh, that exit's dealt with, uh, these are dealt with, we've got a pipe on here. Next stage is obviously the gantry, yeah, which is, right, you know, putting something up here that we can do something with, but I can't do that because I want to attach it to this. Yeah, and so we need to leave this to dry. So, but basically, that is a very, very simple way of how I use odd little bits and ends to create something that looks a little bit more realistic, you know what I mean? Yeah? Now, once you imagine it with, say, a stairwell here, gantry across here, maybe a, an access ladder going up to somewhere up to here, maybe some sort of support platform. I'm not sure if I want to keep this at a, a one level or a two level piece. Yeah? I'm, I'm genuinely not sure yet. But it is clearly coming together very nicely. I'll tell you what we'll do, yeah, because it will make it a lot easier for us to do our gant. No, I won't. One of the things that I don't like doing, yeah, is fixing too many of the sub-assemblies together before I do my gantry work. The reason being, uh, Mel, did you see the video from Witchlock? this week is large Prometheum extraction plant. I haven't, to be perfectly honest, I haven't been watching any other YouTube videos and that sort of stuff. Yeah. That was a teaser. Stay tuned for future episodes. For the book, for his kill team and for his 40k table. Uh, so, there's lots of ideas for this. You will see it be played with. You may see it coming to a book. Yeah. Lots of stuff. I'll have to check out which which locks videos. Yeah, I I'm sort of really I'm stuck with this one because I want to do a load of scratch building and a load of converting with junk, but I can't get out to go get all the junk. Yeah, at the minute from the car boot sales because we don't have them anymore. Yeah, and so sorry guys, and so what you call it. It's a bit of a challenge, so I've got to work with what I've got. But, I mean, this will be the, uh, this is just mainly the industrial elements. I've still got a load of water, uh, water elements to include in it, and a few other builds to put together. And then I want to do some more buildings, and then I've got the Ruined City, because this is going to be a campaign over Corbania Prime. Yeah. What's Per Johnson say? It looks like everyone's answering someone. 
why do you do something about space and not about fortifications from the time period 1600 to 1899 uh because it's a very narrow time period mate now uh that sort of stuff is already covered in the let's makes you can you can get most of the information you need from that uh i haven't done much sci-fi on the channel to be truthful second yeah uh it's a good project for my mental health whilst i'm in lockdown and i'm in isolation because of my bad chest dude ttt have you ever built a circus tent no built a medical tent right guys let me switch my cameras you know what i'm gonna ask you to do right now i'm gonna leave this to, oh isn't that darker i'm gonna leave this to dry yeah uh next stage will be mounting it uh building up our gantries i've got another little project that i want to work on tomorrow night with you yeah while we do the gantries and that sort of stuff which involves those two pieces that piece these two pieces and this piece yeah so which uh i won't say it's a feature build i'll say it's a medium build so my screen is filling with hell yes i have had a wonderful evening with you folks once again yeah we're cracking on with the building i'm feeling a little bit better and above all I'm going to be back to normal hopefully tomorrow and, you know, pottering around and that sort of stuff. So, on the up, yeah? As always, guys, yeah, just keep calm, crack on, and I'll see you tomorrow. All the best, yeah? ta -da.